E10B has actually uh, four payload missions, one in KU band and another one in C band, uh, essentially for the legacy business. And it has also two other missions, European multi-spot and a global multi-spot, both in KU band. E10B is a key satellite in the development of megabit per second uh, managed services, especially in high demand areas like EMEA, and will help to serve aero and maritime verticals. E10B is actually a very special satellite, which is dear to my heart because I started the program when I initially was working for Thales Alenia Space. Uh, we signed it with Yotelsat, and then I moved to Yotelsat so I've been able to see the end of the program on the other side of the table. So I'm really proud to have seen the two stages of the realization of the satellite. So once again, thanks to all the teams. This is our fourth launch in less than three months and the third done by SpaceX. And I just want to thank uh, all the teams, SpaceX, Thales Alenia Space and our Utelsat team for having achieved such a world record of four launches in less than three months. After the successful launch last September of Connect VHTS satellite dedicated to bridging the digital divide in Europe, Utelsat 10B is another promising program. We are extremely proud to provide our long-standing partner Utelsat with this Spacebus Neo satellite, which reflects our ability to develop new digital telecommunications solutions. It is the fruit of a great teamwork with Utelsat, CNES, and ESA, whose support has been crucial as we strive to meet current and emerging market needs. Utelsat 10B has greater capacity than its predecessor Utelsat 10A, also manufactured by Thales Anya Space and launched in 2009. The HTS missions of this new generation satellite will enable Utelsat to meet the growing demand for anywhere, anytime connectivity on land, at sea, and in the air. From its 10 degree east position, Utelsat 10B satellite will not only guarantee the continuity of services, including video broadcasting, but more importantly, boost connectivity on the growing mobility markets. This launch illustrates the strong and trusted relationship with Utelsat. It is the 26 satellites we manufactured and the second HTS satellite we launched this year for Utelsat. We are currently at T minus six minutes and 15 seconds until launch. The range is ready to support and weather has been a watch item today, but continues to trend favorably as, as we move towards liftoff at 9.57 p.m. Eastern time. Now turning our attention to the rocket on your screen, you're looking at a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket set to launch Utelsat's 10B satellite from Space Launch Complex 40. Starting at the bottom of the rocket, we have our nine M1D engines connected to the first stage. These nine engines help accelerate the vehicle through the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere and into space. Having previously supported Telstar 18 Vantage, Iridium 8, and eight Starlink missions, our first stage is flying for the 11th and final time tonight. Due to the performance needed on this mission, the first stage will need to use up the fuel typically needed for recovery and therefore, therefore will be expended. Now above the first stage here is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Utelsat 10B satellite to orbit. At the very top of the rocket, you'll notice the large barrel structure with the pointed nose cone at the top of the second stage. That is our payload fairing. The fairing is made Lock up of- tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. The fairing is made up of two carbon composite halves and protects satellites on their way to orbit and will be jettisoned or separated around three minutes into flight. And lastly, the large trusted structure that you see there is called the Transporter Erector, or TE. We use it to roll the rocket out onto the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's strong fluids. Strong back retract in progress. Just heard a call out for strong back retract in progress. That means that TE is going to prepare to recline. Uh, we will open up the clamp arms. Once those are fully open, then the TE will retract. And you can see on your screen that the clamp arms have begun to open. 
Looks like they are fully open now, so we should see that TE start to recline just slightly away from Falcon 9. Now the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and will tract, retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. And the TE should be fully reclined at this point. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each, a minute apart from each other. First stage finishes up, coming up here shortly at the T minus three minute mark and second stage should finish around the T stage minus two minute mark. Load is complete. And there's that call out, stage one locks load is complete. And stage one pogo. That means that propellant loading is complete on the first stage. And again, at the T minus two minute mark, stage two's propellant loading will complete. Now you see the, those white clouds on your screen. That is the chilled gas above the liquid oxygen tank liquid surface that we vent out overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. When that gas comes out into the Florida air, the humid, moist air condenses into clouds or water. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside the T minus two second mark, we light the Merlin M1D engines for liftoff. The Utah Sat satellite continues to be healthy and Falcon 9, the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. We're just waiting for that call out for stage two propellant loading completion. So stage two locks load is complete. There it is. Stage two locks load complete. That means that Falcon 9's propellant loading is now complete. Weather is still looking for good for T0 and the range is ready to support. Now that locks loading or Propellant loading is now complete on the vehicle. We do vent out the liquid oxygen line on the transporter erector, which you can see there now. That is what those additional white clouds that you're seeing there is that venting. We are coming up on Falcon 9 in startup in just about 10 seconds. That's where the flight computers take over the launch countdown, but also stage one and stage two will begin to pressurize for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out. Now we're just waiting for the final call from the launch director. LD, go for launch. Awesome news. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 carrying the UTELSAT 10B payload. T minus 30 seconds. has successfully lifted off from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the UTELSAT 10B satellite. Power and telemetry. Now during ascent, the M1D engines will actually swivel and help steer Falcon 9. This is known as gimbal. The rocket autonomously tilts the engines just a few degrees and this gimbling allows the vehicle to Falcon perform. Supersonic. 
allows the vehicle to perform a gravity turn, which is when we go vertical as well as horizontal. Now we're still going up, but we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. And we have just heard that we've passed through max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. Now we will throttle those M1D engines back up on the first stage. This is a really cool tracking view of our Falcon 9 vehicle. Coming up next in about a minute, we will have a few events happening back to back. That will be Miko stage back, engine chill has started. Miko stage separation and SCS1. We just heard that call out that the MVAC engine is chilling. Now, Miko is main engine cutoff. That is where all nine of the M1D engines shut down on the first stage. That's what you're seeing lit up on your screen there. They will shut down in preparation for stage separation. That's where the first and second stages will separate. Stage one will um, not be landing on today's mission. And stage two will continue on its journey to take the UTEL SAT-10B satellite to its targeted drop-off orbit. Now those events are coming up here in about 20 seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. <laughs> Stage one FTS is safe. <laughs> Great news, we did have Miko stage separation, and there you can see on your screen that MVAC engine has ignited. Now, as a reminder, we are not attempting to land our first stage today as our mission requires more performance, so it will use up the fuel typically used for landing. Now, coming up next will be fairing separation in a few seconds here. Great live view there of the fairing halves separating from the stage fairing two separation. vehicle. Oh, Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And there we heard the confirmation call out. We will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back down to Earth using our recovery ship, Doug. Second stage is currently in the middle of its first burn and our next milestone coming up is second engine cutoff one or SECA one. And that's scheduled to happen in about four minutes from now. Now, if you're just joining us, we are currently at T plus four and a half minutes into today's mission, UTEL Sat 10B. So far on the mission, we've had a successful liftoff, MECO, stage separation, SES-1, and fairing separation. Again, as a reminder, we did not attempt the landing of our first stage vehicle today as this mission requires more performance. Again, we will be utilizing all of the fuel inside of the stage vehicle. Stage two following an anomalous trajectory. We did utilize all the fuel needed for this mission. So the vehicle is being expended today. Now we're currently in the first burn of two planned MVAC burns prior to satellite deployment. And our next major milestone that we have coming up is SECO-1. And we are just under three minutes away from SECO-1 on the second stage. That's second stage engine cutoff one. And we did hear that stage two is on a nominal trajectory. So good news there. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view on the Falcon 9 second stage, looking at our MVAC engine. Now the MVAC engine is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. 
It utilizes liquid oxygen RP1. That's what we fill our vehicles with. And the, the Merlin vacuum engine also features a larger exhaust section and a significantly larger expansion nozzle, and that's compared to the M1D engines that you see on the first stage vehicle. Now this is to maximize the engine's efficiency in the vacuum of space. Now at full power, the Merlin vacuum engine operates with the greatest efficiency ever for an American-made hydrocarbon rocket engine. Again, if you're just now joining us, you are watching the mission for UTEL Sat-10B's satellite. And we are just a little over a minute away from SECO-1 on the second stage. Now, prior to liftoff, some of you may have noticed that our second stage looks very similar to first stage. Not only does it look similar, but it also has the same diameter, uses the same metal in the tanks, same computer, same propellant, and nearly the same engine. Now, this allows us to use similar tooling, design, and systems to essentially build two rockets that are more reliable. Again, the next event coming up is SECO-1. This will be the first shutdown of this MVAC engine. We do have two planned burns Stage for... Stage two is internal guidance. We do have two planned burns for this mission to get UTELSAT-10B to its targeted drop-off orbit. And we are just about 20 seconds Stage away. Stage two FTS has saved. About 10 seconds away from SECO-1 on the second stage. And back shut down. And there we saw that MVAC engine shutting down. We did hear that call out. Now just waiting. Nominal orbit insertion. It's exactly what we were waiting for, confirmation of good orbit. And now that we have confirmation of nominal orbital insertion, the second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around the T plus 26 minute mark. So we'll see you back here in 17 minutes. And in the meantime, enjoy the views and the space tunes.
expected loss of signal Bermuda.
Acquisition of Sigdor and Gabon. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the UTELSAT 10B satellite for our customer UTELSAT. We've had a nominal mission so far. Falcon 9 launched on time at 9.57 p.m. Eastern time from Space Launch Complex 40. And stage two is has completed its first burn of the Merlin vacuum engine. Now we're about uh, under a few seconds away from that second engine burn on that MVAC engine. Uh, this is carrying, there we go. And there it is, you can see SES2 there live on your screen. This is the second burn for this MVAC engine with the second stage carrying the UTELSAT 10B payload on its way to its targeted drop off orbit. Now this burn will last just about a minute long. Again, this is the second burn for this mission today. Once the MVAC engine shuts down, the vehicle will be able to coast. And it will coast to its final drop off orbit for the UTELSAT 10B satellite. Again, we did just have SES-2. This burn lasts just a little over a minute and should be shutting down here shortly. And there you could see the MVAC engine shutting down. Now we are just waiting for confirmation of good orbit. Model orbit insertion. And there it is. Now with confirmation of a successful second burn of the second stage and confirmation of good orbit, the next milestone coming up is payload deploy. So we'll see you back here in about five minutes. Until then, enjoy the Space Tunes.
Warriors. Welcome back to our webcast of UTELSAT 10B. 
So far in the mission, we've had an on-time liftoff at 9.57 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by successful ascent, stage separation, and two second stage engine burns. As a reminder, UTELSAT is a world-leading satellite operator. The 10 degree east location that UTELSAT 10B will occupy has been operated by UTELSAT since 1987 and provides unrivaled coverage in the heart of the European, Middle Eastern, and African regions. Now we are standing by for the deployment of their UTELSAT 10B satellite, which we expect here in just a few seconds. Halo deploy confirmed. An incredible view. You are watching the UTELSAT 10B satellite drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage. Now this confirms confirmation. This confirms confirmation of deployment of the payload. So with that, we're going to end our launch broadcast for tonight. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer UTELSAT for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And as I mentioned earlier, today's launch concludes our 185th Falcon 9 mission to date and 53rd launch this year.